And welcome to another edition of Rolling Illini. I'm Avery Schaefer, joined by two of my partners in crime, Zane Bando, who also happens to be my roommate, and show newbie, John McSwain. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty good, Avery. Alright. So... I'm doing I'm doing well as well. Okay. So we have a lot to get to tonight, including live updates from the wheelchair basketball tournament and updates on the wheelchair track season and the last big thing of a bit of a I would say disturbing trend that I found online that needs to be talked about, I feel like. So let's hop right into it. Zan, how are the uh, boys doing at the uh, tournament right now? So what we're going to do right now is I am in the process of queuing up the Facebook page and I will be able to give you a... Uh, Little tidbits throughout the hour. So as I um, as I um, as I do that, we can go into what we will be discussing tonight, and I will make sure to let you guys know what's going on. Okay then. So let's uh, jump straight into it. Then. So, John, you recently made the transition from. From wheelchair basketball to track. Why did you do that? Uh, you know, Avery, um, uh, there was, uh, some stuff going on and, uh, wheelchair basketball just wasn't fitting in with, uh, everything I had, uh, planned, uh, last year. So I decided to give it a break for a little bit. But I uh, definitely want to come back to it at some point. So, that begs the question. You could have switched to anything. Why track? Uh, we have one of the best wheelchair track programs here at Illinois. Um, a lot of Paralympians train here, and a lot of Paralympians came out of this organization. Um, and we have one of the best coaches in the world. Uh, so I felt like I could really learn learn from him and from the Paralympians, and also uh, my family is uh, is big into running. My dad just qualified for the Boston Marathon. Way to go, Dad! <laughs> Way to go, Dad! Um, so I, earlier this season on the show. We covered Tatiana McFadden and her, let, let me say, uh, interesting time of it going to, I believe it was the Chicago Marathon. Uh, have you had any interesting... Um, Let's say out of the ordinary experiences. Uh, I haven't uh, had any races yet, but um, I just think it's really cool that I get to train next to Paralympians um, every day, Monday through Saturday. I get to lift with them, and I get to push with them, uh, and yeah, it's just a really great experience. What's the mentor mentee role like? Um, it's pretty humbling because 
in basketball. Like I came in and I had 10 years of experience for basketball and I came into track with absolutely zero experience. Um, so I really just had to come in with an open mind and just soak everything up. Now, to add to that, um, I'm just curious. Uh, what do you think of your track experience so far? And um, I've been hearing just from other sources that um, you guys' track season uh, begins in just the next couple of weeks. Uh, what are some early expectations that uh, we should be lo looking out for this season? And what do you th think you bring to the team? And I also have another point that I wanted to bring up. Um it's a final. Uh, the Whitewater men's team defeated U of I forty two. Uh, excuse me, seventy two to forty nine. So that is the first final um, of the evening for the men's side. I will get to the women's side in a little bit, but I want you to be able to answer the a question uh, first, John, before we move on to anything else. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Um, so I think uh, I can bring a great worth work ethic uh, to the team. Um, and I think I can really just learn, learn from the Paralympians and learn from coach. Um, and yeah, like you said, this season is coming up. Uh, we have some pretty big meets coming up and, uh, marathons. Uh, the New York half is in March. Okay. Um, and, uh, Tokyo, or a race overseas is, uh, coming up. That's a big marathon. Okay. Uh, Daniel Romanchuk, um... Uh, he has the world the world record for uh, uh, the marathon is uh, is actually doing that one and he's doing the half. Uh, he hasn't won anything in the half yet or he hasn't won it, but he's been on the podium a couple times and uh, this year he really wants to win it. <laughs> Nothing like the near miss. <laughs> so. What are are some of the the major differences in mental preparation that you notice from wheelchair basketball to track? Uh, so wheelchair basketball is obviously a team sport, yeah. so it's so yeah. it's so team oriented. And you have to really work with your teammates, and if you don't, then you won't you won't really win a lot, no matter how good you are. Um, and in track, it's all on you. So if you don't train hard, then you don't train hard, and that's just on you. So they're the mentality for both of them are very different, but then they're very they're very similar. So. Last week, or the week before, yeah, it was the week before, I had a chance to interview Megan Blanc. For those of you who don't know, she is a multi-paralympic uh, wheelchair basketball player um, who currently plays in San Diego with the wolf pack and and one of the things she pointed out about wheelchair basketball that some people don't realize is the sheer physicality of that so is there any comparable thing in track then uh, so in track, I have heard of people crashing into each other <laughs> and uh, just like flipping their chairs, mostly when they're going downhill and they try to take a turn too fast. Because um, when you try to take a turn, you're obviously supposed to slow down. But um, physics, <laughs> physics, yeah. Um, but yeah, in track, like. If you fall out of your chair or flip it over, it's so much harder to um to get back into it, and that's so time consuming. Now, you mentioned flip flipping your chair over. 
I'm gonna spread a little uh, tidbits about how we got here. You spent a good 30 minutes hanging on to the back of my chair as I sped over here. And you didn't seem to be worried about um, tipping over them. No. No, I mean, if I... So. <laughs> no, if I fall out of my chair, or in this chair, yeah. my day chair, um, then yeah. I can just get back into it. But with the trap chair, um, it's so tight in there. And then you have to strap yourself back in. It's the NASCAR and, driver hit. Yeah, it's pretty tight. And so by the time you get yourself situated again, you've lost a good two, three minutes. And that sets you back pretty far. So, uh, Zan, um, I know you haven't watched a lot of um, wheelchair track, but if any at all. But um, what are your initial impressions of of the sport or of um, the general feeling of being a track athlete? Well, it seems like an interesting sport. I mean, overall, um, the athletes are dedicated to their craft and they kind of do things in different ways, but they still push themselves as other able-bodied athletes, which I think is cool. And it's a sport that um, we at the university take um, tremendously great pride in. So we're, we're, um, we're happy about that. Um, I have another uh, score update for you in the first of two games uh, for the women. Uh, one of the final scores that I'd like to give you uh, is a tough loss to Whitewater by 3, 34 to 31. We missed a potential game winner with, uh, excuse me, we missed a potential um, tying three with under 20 seconds to go that would have forced overtime. And then in the second game, which I wanted to share with you all, is here it is it's right here and i wanted to share with um with you that in game two uh illinois split um the series i guess you could say for today the final score was 55 to 38 and a win for the women's team and another update i wanted to give you is also from earlier today um it is the uh missouri matchup and that one <laughs> Two seconds, um, and that will. And the final was seventy-five to fifty-five for the men, and I will give you the women, and then we can get back to what we were talking about earlier with um, with wheelchair track. So for the women, this is the um, this is the women's game. This was, I believe, the third matchup. Uh, and so Whitewater they played a they played a bunch of games today. Um, one second. So in here, I don't think they were able to get the full stream. Unfortunately, the camera may have gone bad. So unfortunately, I can't be the final of, of this particular game. But that's all I have for now. <laughs> um, in that vein, I feel like we should talk about the fact that Self promo. We're the only uh, radio station in the country who has a show like we do, who covers wheelchair uh, athletics. So, where do you think? Wait, Avery. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but um, that's actually a very interesting statement that you make. Oh, uh, what makes you um, what makes you say that with certainty out of curiosity? It's it it's the only one I know of. Okay. I that's not that sounds better because initially what you said was kind of a bold statement. So I wanted I wanted to make I want I need, I wanted to make sure that that was what you meant. So Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, so where do you think the lack of coverage? I think the lack of coverage comes from just, in my humble opinion, or the lack of resources and just the lack of time that someone wants to put into running a 
social media or a or a website. And you know, I think like you know, if they want to try to make wheelchair sports more prominent and just as relevant as all the other sports, I feel like that this particular field, these wheelchair sports, should be able to have um updated updated websites on their respective sites. It's great that the wheelchair basketball and wheelchair track teams have Facebook pages, but they have to understand that Facebook is kind of behind the times a little bit to where if you look at the demographics, uh, Facebook is being used uh, for older people. I still communicate. I still I still use it because there are various people who only use it. But I think, you know, now the way the future is just finding everything on Twitter and finding everything on Instagram. And I just feel like it's a lot more accessible. It's a lot more mobile. And I feel like we need to try to get with the times just a little bit. It because Facebook is great, but you have to scramble to each live video to see what, what the final score is, and it's kind of a little bit um inconvenient. Where if you just had a if you just had a graphic displaying all the final scores with no uncertainty whatsoever, um, it would just make a lot more sense. But that's my that's my humble opinion. I'm not trying to take a jab at anyone. It's just a simple observation that I've noticed because I look at the Facebook page often. Be- as I have to, I have to know what's um, what's going on in order to be a part of this program. So, just overall an observation that I've noticed, and hopefully they can try to get better um, in utilizing that. Because I, because if they did, I think a lot more people would follow the pages. Yes, that's just my opinion. Definitely, and that's a good segue into. I only have two Twitter followers, so if you like what you're hearing right now, hit me up with a follow. At hashtag golden boy on Twitter and hashtag QA with A on Instagram. Okay, you can follow me. It's actually it's it's not a hashtag, it's actually um at so for me it's uh for all of my social medias it's at Zambando ninety nine and you can follow me on there. I have a I have a little I have a little bit of a growing following, so I appreciate yeah. when I he does. I appreciate does. when new people follow me. So I appreciate that as well. You can follow me on Instagram at Sanbando99 as well as Twitter um, at Sanbando99. You can add me on Facebook and also add me on Snapchat with the exact same username. I am accessible all the different ways, so it won't be too hard to find me. And I also have a website that you can go check out. at Zanbando.com, Z-A-I-N-B-A-N-D-O.com which is associated with WordPress. And I have personally been there, and it's great. So go check it out. And with that, we're going to take our first break. This is Rolling Line Eye on WPGU 1071. And we're back. This is Rowan Wainai. I'm Z- and Bando. And before we get back into the show, I just have a quick little tidbit for anyone that is interested in potentially um, moving their housing for next year or in the future. So this is what we have. If you're looking for a new place to live, you should take one of the virtual tours of the apartments in 707. It's a new student housing development in Campus Town that offers a fully equipped fitness and yoga center, indoor basketball court, a spa with tanning and sauna, indoor bike storage, and an outdoor amenity deck with a pool. Sounds like the ultimate campus living experience. Visit the office of 707 at 707 South Ford Street in Champaign-Urbana. Especially the spa, if you're me. <laughs> Could see that too? So, anyway, uh, let's get back into it. So, as we said before the break... Uh, the wheelchair track season is heating up. So, John, how are you personally preparing for that? Uh, well, Avery, um, I come into every practice, um, with an open mind, and I, I really try to work as hard as I can every day. Uh, Monday through Saturday is a long week. Uh, it's a long week, yeah. Our roller mm-hmm. workouts are usually about 
45 minutes. Lifting is usually about an hour. Um, and yeah, you get pretty tired by the end of the week come Friday and Saturday. Uh, but you really just have to push through and know that those two days and those two practices, whether it's lifting or roller, is really going to make you better. Now, I have to ask you, John, um, I used to um, I used to manage um, a couple of teams back in high school, and I understand the huge importance of um, of having like a huge influence, and I feel like that coaches play a big part in that. Do you notice um, any differences from um, the wheelchair basketball coaching style potentially to how the track coaches uh, run the program? What are your initial impressions? and what makes you so excited to get started in these next couple of weeks and if you don't, don't mind me asking what do you think is the biggest uh, meat of the season that could determine um um the competitors or the participants that go to our uh, nationals and everything like that NCAA. that's right uh well the biggest meat of the season um i think for the sprinters um uh, there's a race called a desert. It's in a uh, Arizona, I believe, and that's a pretty big one uh, for the sprinters. And then obviously for the distance uh, runners, it's uh, the marathons. So there's a marathon coming up in uh, Tokyo. Uh, I think it's in Tokyo, um, and that one's like huge. People from all over the world go to that one. And then there's um. There's one, there's a half in New York, and then in the fall there was the New York Marathon and the Chicago Marathon, um, and those were those were huge too. Um, is there a reason why this particular one is one that a lot of people come to? And uh, if so, are there like any specific or important traditions that, um, that Avery and I, people who are on the outside looking in, potentially should should know as to why the tradition of this particular um, meat per se is, is is important. Yeah, so a lot of people go to Tokyo, and, uh, Chicago, and New York because I mean they're the most well known and they're the most well respected. If you say like, yeah, I qualified for New York or for Boston or or Tokyo, or any of those, like, that that holds some, some real girth. So, um, and yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. It seems like you're, it seems like you're really, if you get started, it seems like there's all, um, there's all positive things coming to light there. So it's, um, it's, <laughs> it's awesome to know that you're trying to smoothly make the transition from, uh, from the basketball court to the um to the track per se. Yes. So, so Avery, I'm um I'm go uh, I'm going to throw oh wait, I'm going to throw it back to you now. Um are there any um are there any other specific points of interest that you have not um that we have I discussed rather with John that you would like to talk about or do you have um or do you have an additional topic? So one thing I feel like we should talk about is the Russian reinstatement into the Paralympic uh, scene. Um, it has been widely debated whether they should be reinstated. I am not at this point going to offer my opinion on that, but just know that they have been reinstated and more news on that to come. What do you think of that? Well, I just have a follow-up question. Is there a reason why you don't feel it's appropriate to bring up your opinion about the uh, about the reinstatement of the Russians? <laughs> because I I don't want to poke at anyone, but maybe I should. I am of the opinion that they should they should have been reinstated but not fully as, as the allocation for their initial um 
for their initial uh, banishment, I guess I'll say, from the uh, Paralympic scene was a doping scandal. That's correct. And that uh, they they have not been forced to uh, to undergo a, another test before being reinstated. I just their personal word is not enough for me to support fully the reinstatement. Okay, I respect that opinion. John, do you have any initial thoughts on um, on this matter? Uh, you know, I haven't really read that much into it, and I'm not really up to date on the whole subject, uh, so I don't really know if I can give a full, well-rounded opinion on it. Okay, I, res- so, I respect that as well. Let, let me ask you the question this way. Um, some people out there, <laughs> I'm not one of them, but some people out there may say that uh, athletes with disabilities need some sort of advantage, which, which uh, in, engaging in a scandal like this could potentially give them. What, what would you say to those people? So, um, from what I understand, your question is, what do you think of the people that feel it's okay for people with disabilities to have an advantage is what you're saying? I'm saying that that some some people may argue that that's, that, that is okay and viable. Uh, because of of the disability, what do you think of that? I mean, I think everyone is right to their own opinion, and I also think that um, you know, if they feel that it's an advantage, then they don't know, and they're just someone from the outside looking in, then they don't truly know, you know, what, for example, that disabled person went through to get to that level of athlete that they are. And I feel like that they should be, they should be respected for that. If they're if they're if they're op- if they're openly cheating and getting away with it, that's another problem. But if they're but if they're an athlete with a physical disability who's done everything the right way, has never said um has never said no, has always been appropriate, et cetera, et cetera, the, there shouldn't be any argument as to why an athlete with a disability um wouldn't be able to participate because they should be able to. I th- yeah. think it's absolutely r- ridiculous that this is even that this is even an argument amongst the general public. I think the only way mm-hmm. for them not to be able to participate is if they were open is if they were openly cheating. That, that, that's I that's mean, I, the I, only way. Yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So one of the arguments I often present when I hear an argument like this is that cold medicines or other things of that nature may have um, small amounts of substances in them. Well, I think well, the well, I think the anti-doping age and see not to get too not to get too specific, but I think but I think the anti-doping agency needs to be a little bit more aware of these substances that they're giving these athletes because ultimately not only does it not only does it um have a bad reflection on the athlete itself it has a it has a bad reflection on the doping agency because they're the ones they're, they're the ones managing all of the athletes and making sure that they're clean and eligible to compete so i mean that's that's their problem. If they're if they're knowingly giving athletes tainted supplements and they're not doing anything about it, and they want to make sure that an athlete is a fair advantage so they can win, so so they can so they can win a gold medal or whatever the case may be because it gives them more fame or what have you, then that's then that's the anti doping agency's problem. And also, the athletes need to be more educated if those are the types of. Um, drugs that they are being given 
so to speak. And to me, it's just it doesn't it it doesn't it it, it doesn't make every sense. Everybody any sense. Everybody should be able to play on this exact same playing field. It doesn't make sense to me. And uh, and that playing field should not be dictated by stereotypes. I agree. I agree with that as well. Which, which brings me to my next point that I will share with you after our final break here on WPGU 1071. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to WPGU 107.1. This is Rowan Illini, and I'm Zan Bando. And for those of you who are just joining us and are thinking of potential hosting for next year, I have something for you. If you're looking for a new place to live, you should take one of the virtual tours of the apartments at 707. It's a new student housing development in Campus Town that offers a fully equipped fitness and yoga center, indoor basketball court, a spa with tanning and sauna, indoor bike storage, and an outdoor amenity deck with a pool. Sounds like the ultimate campus living experience. Visit the office of 707 at 707 South Fort Street in Champaign. Also, we would like to give you guys a little notice for this weekend. Tomorrow at 11 a.m., the U of I men's basketball team takes on Penn State right here at the State Farm Center Will they it, where they will honor the legendary final Illini team as the majority of the team will be returning for a reunion postgame. The first 1,500 people to enter in to State Farm Center when the doors open at 10 a.m. will receive a free complimentary poster courtesy of State Farm Center and the iPhone. So we hope to see you all there tomorrow to cheer the Illini on to victory and to get back on track. Ask you a wow. I will be there, so if you see me, come and say hi. I will be there as well as sitting side behind the salt basket. So, as I teased before the break, I, I'm going to, or we're going to now, talk about something that I found online this week during during research for the show that is slightly disturbing. And that is the idea that an increasing number of people are intentionally giving themselves disabilities. Now, I will stop right there and and say to you, Zan, what is your initial impression when you hear something like that? Um, in so many words, I think it's very sad because these people want, I don't know, I'm just going to put it to you bluntly because this is how I feel. In my mm -hmm. humble opinion, people do this so other people can have sympathy for them without realizing the full truth that they're doing this. In a, in a fraudulent manner that is inappropriate and it just makes me really upset when someone tries to impersonate someone else that they're not just so they can feel better about themselves and, just, and it just shows where their mind's at and their mind is clearly not in the right place. If they have the time to be doing that, they either have, uh, who knows, they've either, they, they've either lost their job and they're down on their luck and they need some sort of love or recognition or rush or I don't know what it is but but the people who choose to um engage in this kind of act are going against most likely their moral compass and just simply who they how they want to be represented in the world and you know it you know it should make people like you myself um and John very uh very disappointed because you know this is something that we have to deal with on a daily basis and for and, and for someone who and for someone who does not, in my humble opinion, they shouldn't be abusing their own power. And I just simply think that that's the wrong thing to do. And I think and I think those people who are doing that clearly need a reality check. And um, yeah, I'm gonna simply 
he leaved at that. So so I'll let you and John have the floor on this. And I think it's a very, very um, disappointing topic and a topic that needed to be brought up this week. And I'm glad you did. And out of curiosity, uh, do you happen to know the source and potentially the author who wrote, wrote this story? Because I'm curious to know uh, kind of how they found out this information or uh, of course. what was kind of going of on with course. that. Um, for those of you who are interested, said people fall into the category of transabled. Which is something I have never heard of. That is, and that seems very strange. <laughs> <laughs> and this was, I can't say it was first reported by the by the uh, New York Post, but that's where I found it. So go ahead and look in the New York Post for that. Uh, one thing that came to mind as you were speaking is... I'm going to play devil's advocate here real quick and say it's a good intention with bad manifestations. That is to say that the idea of trying to put oneself in a disabled person's shoes to better understand what their life is like is a good idea, but you don't have to do it that way. What do you think, John? Um, well, for someone that, that wants to give themselves a disability, and I don't think that they're doing it to put themselves in, someone, in someone's shoes that has a disability already. And I think they're doing it um, to, get, to get anything that they can out of it. I mean, they are... Um, so I'm going to tell a quick story. Um, so okay, when I was younger, I used to go to Disney World a lot with my family. And um, the first few times we went, like, they were really lenient about me, like, getting on the rides first and stuff and skipping the lines. Because at that time, I could walk, but I had really bad balance. And I had a chair with me. That's how they were with me, too, whenever I used to go to Disney. Exactly. Uh, World or land when I was younger. Yes. So, um, and then, like, the last few times I went, um, they were really strict about it. It wouldn't even let me, like, go on the rides first because cause they didn't believe that I had a disability because they said, like, that other people were basically pretending to be disabled and pretending to have chairs and... All of that. So well, that just shows you where where um where 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 Disney's head is at, because I feel like if there was an easier way to I don't know do some sort of legal background check on them to ensure that they have a disability so they can cut the line, or I don't know what they would do for that, but I think they need to somehow reevaluate that because if things like what you said keep happening then nothing will change. So that is a very unfortunate thing that they believed you in the beginning, but now they no longer do because they didn't think it was quote-unquote real, which I find very, I don't even know what, I find it very disappointing and disturbing to even think about that. Um, what else? I don't have too many stories in regards to kind of what your situation is, but man, that... that that story that you just told me does not make me happy within the slightest. I am extremely disappointed that they would just completely flip the switch on you like that later on in your life and not believe you that you actually have a disability. I don't know. It just, to me, it just, it doesn't make logical sense as to why they would think that. And I wish that it could maybe remedy that in some way in the future because more and more people are going to go on these rides there's going to be people from all different walks of life and they should be able to have the same protocol for every single person so everyone can be treated equally and yada 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 shouldn't even have to be saying this stuff because it's 2019 and we're still talking right. about exactly. it exactly so i don't know so john i have to ask you one last question before we get off air here and that is has Sports in any way helped curtail the 
sentiment you just discussed has is your reason for going into sports to deal with that or um you know i think i think sports has done a lot for me uh sports has given me a lot of confidence and uh it's it's given me an outlet uh like if i'm frustrated or something i just go push and go lift and it's all better um uh but yeah when when people see uh people with disabilities participating in sports um i feel like that kind of puts uh those disabled athletes on the same playing field uh if you want to say that i would as... agree because they're doing what they love to do and that's yes exactly um yeah, it kind of puts them on that same playing field as uh, all those able-bodied spectators. Good to you know. I'm I'm really I'm I'm really I'm really happy that you made that point because that's really important. Um, this was a really really good uh, threesome show. I thought um, Avery and I would like to thank you for coming on to WPG this evening. And at that, I think it's time to wrap it up. So yes. Avery, I'm gonna let you do the. Hundreds on that, and we'll all say our names, and then we will get out of here. Of course. This has been Rolling Illini on WPGU 1071. I'm Avery Schaefer with... Zan Bando. John McSween. And we will see you next Friday. Same time, same place. Keep it rolling.